all souls don't get liberated, but all souls do go out of this, these universes at the time of dissolution or parala. Parala is a dissolution of this creation. When the creation is dissolved up to the astral stage, we call it the parala or dissolution. At that time, all the souls go up to the causal region and they wait there till new creations come. And there's a cycle that goes on and on. In the case of a Mahaparala, grand resolution, everything gets dissolved except the upper part of Parbrahm, the lower part gets dissolved, causal plane gets dissolved. At that time, the souls go and they are in limbo in the upper part of Parbrahm. And they are held there, which is an island of such kind, the upper part of Parbrahm. It's a little different from lower part of Parvram, if you know the structures and the names I am using. And that is where the time starts, upper part of Parvram, was where the time was created and then time began to function in the lower part of Parvram. In the grand resolution, Mahaparala, uh, even that lower part of time is dissolved, everything is dissolved. Create, creator of time is also dissolved. And then they are held in limbo in the upper part. When the new creation starts, they start their journey again. When we say liberated, we mean those who have gone to such khand. So to that extent, they are not liberated because they are still in a, in a certain cycle. Those are liberated who, with the help of a perfect living master, are able to go beyond Parbrahm through a dark valley that is lying beyond that, a very strange kind of experience. It's called Bhamar Gufa. That means the whirling cave. The cave is whirling around so that you never know in which direction you are entering, which direction you are coming. Souls go through that. The light of a soul in Bhamar Gufa entering after Parabrahm is equal to 16 suns of the physical universe. That's our individual light. And yet it's too dark for that light. So it's only with the light of a perfect living master we cross that and he can see the other end. When we enter without the help of a perfect living master, we keep whirling and, and we think we have reached the end, we come out the same way where we, where we entered. So this is just an example. It's just a physical example of something that is non-physical. But it's good to know that there is a big barrier even between Parbrahm and Sajkhand. And therefore, many masters have come who've taken us to liberation up to Parbrahm, upper part of Parbrahm. And we call them in our language, sad gurus, sad gurus. That means gurus who attain the stage of sad, which is the stage at Parbrahm. And then there are sat gurus who attain the stage of sat, or the truth, which is our true home, sat lok or such kind. So liberation means, in my definition, such kind. That means where you have no chance of being sent down just mechanically, just by itself, by the process of creation that you're sent down. Up to par, Brahm, you can be. But such kind, entirely up to you. You merge with totality. Whether you come in this form or another form or a total form, up to you. It's real free will there. The real free will in such kind, it doesn't exist anywhere else. There's no real free will in any area of creation except such kind. So liberation, is only for marked souls. Marked souls are those who have been marked by perfect living masters to be taken back home. And they are marked, and when their time comes, they be become seekers. And the seeking comes from inside, and they don't know where the seeking is coming from. The seeking comes straight from the soul, not from the mind, not from the thought process. It is deeper than that. And that's when a perfect living master touches their soul with his unconditional love and they feel the journey has begun. So those are the people liberated.